Hi, Terry Warburton and Ken Titmus here. We're going to shoot a little video talking about our favorite friend, the Peak. This is the 10th year anniversary of the Peak, and for those of you who don't know what it is, you should know what it is because it's the best development tool for brass players and woodwind players of the embouchure muscles that has ever hit the market. And I'm very thrilled to say Mr. Kenny invented it, and he's going to tell you what inspired that invention right after I finished petting my dog? Well, uh, when I first thought of the peat, I was actually in bed about 1.30 at night. I was feeling very guilty because I hadn't practiced that day, hadn't even warmed up. And for a trumpet player, that's impending disaster if you have a gig coming up. So uh, I thought to myself, well, I got to do something. I think I'll use my old trusty gel pen, my Pilot G2. I used to put the clicker in there and hold that in my chops and say, well, you know, that'll give the chops a little bit of a, of a challenge and then they'll build up overnight. And then I was thinking, you know, when I squeeze, this fatter part right here presses against my lip this way. What I really need is something that I can pull from the other end because that's the way the air column hits the chops. And I had been talking to a, one of our customers, a really great high note lead player guy, Chad Schupman in town. And uh, I remember we were working with mouthpieces and he said, oh, don't worry about shallow. I can play really, really shallow because my lips never leave my teeth. And I was thinking, you know, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think when I fail, uh, uh, run out of gas or can't make a high note it's because my chops are leaving my teeth. The carburetor here, the nozzle, cannot control and handle the air column, the PSI that I'm producing. So uh, I went into the garage. I couldn't find anything useful, but I finally came across a lag bolt, big steel lag bolt with a hex nut on the top. And I put that in behind my chops and pulled on it for a while and uh, said, well, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired there. So I went to bed, woke up the next day, didn't even remember I had done that, until I started brushing my teeth, and I felt, wow, I feel stronger. I feel like I did a gig last night. So I knew I was onto something there. So the next day I went in and kind of whittled out a, a prototype uh, disc on the end of a stick and showed Terry and I think uh, I think your eyes got big as tennis balls. I you, when you I saw knew that. exactly what it was going to do, why it was going to do it. It was almost like the light bulb went on over my head because what Kenny just said, <clears throat> your embouchure strength is really it only has to control how much air pressure you're pushing through it. The harder you blow, the more your chops want to give out the stronger they have to be to pull back. And to pull back, there's only one way to develop those muscles, and that's by playing. Well, as soon as you play, you're slamming a mouthpiece on your chops, which is defeating the purpose of trying to strengthen the chops. So Kenny's invention, I realized, was exactly, or I was hoping it was. We didn't know yet, but I was hoping that from what he said about why these muscles hurt, because he's focusing so hard on not letting his chops give it up. And that's the key word. Your chops give it up when they get tired. So in an isometric exercise, they get stronger, not bigger. We don't need Arnold Schwarzenegger biceps for lips. We need Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, the karate Bruce Lee. Hmm. Thank you very much. So anyways, we designed a few different shapes. Kenny finally liked one that I came up with. and. The two of us said, well, let's make a dozen and get them out to some people and see how they like them. And everybody liked them. And everybody realized that in 20 minutes, their chops felt like they just played a four-hour gig. And that, my friends, is hard to do. It can compress practice time down to minutes instead of hours with the same result of embouchure strength, strengthening and building up the chops. All right, Ken? Exactly right. And I noticed over the course of that week after the first peak that I kept gaining more and more endurance. And I can say that since I've been using the peak, 
I've never left a rehearsal feeling tired and wasted and beat up. Uh, it makes that much difference. If you add it to your practice routine, you don't replace anything uh, that you do on the trumpet, but uh, sometimes you can't always get in the full regiment, and routine, and workout that you do with the trumpet, and the peak just fills in that gap, uh, I think, pretty good. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. It's a tool that is recommended by players around the world, the list of which is mind-boggling. People, you would think, goodness gracious, these guys don't need stronger chops. The fact is, we all need stronger chops, and we all need to maintain our chops. That's the key, is that it's a maintenance tool, especially in a lot of amateur players. You can't practice three hours a day, four hours a day, like a pro. who That's his only job in life. But you can find a few minutes in the morning and a few minutes at night to use the peat as an isometric tool. Both ends of it's doing different things. The disc is, I like to think of as doing long tones and build up some corners. The small end, you focus your chops, and that's like doing lip slurs where you really need a, a more accurate focus on the chops. So both ends are useful. Both ends have proven this is our 10th year of making it, and uh, I believe we're somewhere around number 50,000 of them, which means there's an awful lot of happy players out there, and I'm sure in another 10 years we'll probably triple or quadruple that number of happy players. So if you don't know what a Pete is, ask somebody that has one. Trust me, they will tell you it is the best tool ever. So there.